Hello, today we are going to talk about how to properly place the gel eye pads. The purpose of the gel eye pad is to keep the bottom lashes down during your procedure. Sometimes the bottom lashes will come up and it'll look like a top lash and you could accidentally lash the bottom lash, therefore keeping the eye closed shut and that's not what we want to do. The purpose also for the gel eye pad is that it keeps the fumes from the glue going into the eye. Okay, so it serves two purposes. When you first open your gel eye pad, there's going to be a clear film. You gently spread them apart. Okay, this is going to be where the gel part is. Okay, it'll feel nice and cool usually to your client's skin. You can either ask your client to open their eye or you can gently lift up their eye. I prefer to lift up their eyes so that way they're not looking directly into the light above and they're not blinking a lot. So I'll lift her eye up, okay, and I'll take my finger and I'll lower the lid so that I have better access. You want to make sure you're placing your gel eye pad one to two millimeters away from the eyeball. This young lady has some longer outer corners, so I'm gonna gently take my tools and just lift up her eyelashes on the outer corner because I wanna make sure I'm able to lash every lash. As you see, I have the bigger portion towards the outer cheek, and then I have the thinner portion going towards the inner corner and the nose. I'm gonna double check. Tilt your chin up towards me. Okay. So again, you want to make sure you have all of the outer corner available and everything secured. Now, even sometimes when you place the gel eye pads, the little bottom lashes can creep up. So as you see right here, there's a little bottom lash right here. Okay. To prevent that, you're going to take another little piece of tape. I put it on my hand and I detack it so that when I take it off at the end of the procedure, it's not going to be pulling her natural lashes out. And I'm going to place it on the outer corner. Again, I want to keep my tape from going one to two millimeters into the eye. Okay. I'm going to take another piece of tape and I'm going to go in the opposite direction to make sure if there's any on the inner corner that might be coming out. All right. So I'm doing kind of a V or a crisscross way. You'll even see sometimes people will place one in the middle just to make sure. Okay. Once I have everything secure, I always double check with my client to see if she's okay. Does everything feel okay? Yes. Okay. And that is how to properly place the gel iPad. So now that we have her lashes properly secured with the gel iPads, we are going to take a look at her natural lashes. Okay, a person can have multiple layers of lashes and you can see here that she really does. There's three different growth cycles, ACT, we've got the antigen, catagen, and telogen. And here you can see that she's got different growth cycles, different lengths, different thicknesses. So let's kind of comb through. All right, you see this nice one? That's gonna be more of your catagen, okay? All right, let's find the antigen, one of those baby lashes. All right, there's a baby lash right there. You see how short that is? Sometimes when you're first lashing, you think, was that lash cut or whatnot? But it's still just growing out. Okay, let's find a nice telogen. The telogen lashes are gonna be longer and thicker in length. All right, so now that we've kind of identified the three different growth cycles, we're going to work on isolation. Isolation is the hardest part of lashing. Basically, you're getting one natural lash in your tweezers and keeping the neighboring lashes away. So in the beginning, sometimes you want to make sure that you take both tweezers and you're digging and combing through, okay? If you try to do it with just one hand to get one lash by itself, it is quite challenging. So I'm going to, I've got two right here, so I want to open it up and then I want to place my tweezers gently on the iPad. 
Sometimes as a new artist, you're kind of scared to find your pressure. This doesn't hurt the client as long as you're not putting too much pressure, but you want to make sure that you have one natural lash by itself, okay? Because if you're gluing lashes stuck together, that means that the growth cycle cannot continue. As you see, when you have a nice long telogen, there's usually going to be an antigen, a shorter one, hanging out, okay? If you glue a antigen and a telogen together, that can cause follicle damage, meaning that the lash cannot continue to grow out how it's supposed to. The telogen lash is going to stay in the follicle for another 45 to 100 days, depending on when your client comes in. And the antigen is going to continue to grow out. So if this is trying to grow, but this is staying, it's going to be uncomfortable for your client and eventually can cause lash damage. All right, so let's talk about picking up your lash thing, uh, extension and placing it in glue, knowing the appropriate amount, okay? First, you wanna just practice taking the lash off the strip, okay? You want it to come towards you and you wanna pull up, all right? You also wanna grab the lash higher up at the top, not down here, because then it makes it harder for you to dip your glue and have control over the direction of placement. So you wanna grip the lash higher up and you wanna pull forward and straight off the strip. Okay, do that again. Pull forward and straight off. Once you decide that you have the correct lash taken off, then you're gonna to wanna to dip it in the adhesive. Okay. You don't need to put a lot of adhesive in your glue ring. Some people use a jade stone or a glue dot holder, whatever you decide to use. You still want to make sure that you dip the lash into the glue up to halfway and take it out. Okay. As you see, there's not a lot of glue on this. You don't need to have a bunch of beads. Okay. So this is an example of how to do it. I'm going to set it right here and I'm going to grab another lash and show you how not, how much glue not to have. All right. Okay, so sometimes when you're new at this, you kind of dip a lot and it gets kind of thick. Okay, and you see there's a bead of glue right up there. You don't want to have too much where you see a bunch of beads, okay? All right, we'll place that right here. Okay, this will come with practice. Okay, so now we're going to place everything together. We want to, again, always make sure we have good isolation, meaning we have one natural lash by itself, okay? I'm going to get my tweezers around this one. Okay, and then I'm going to grab my lash, I'm going to dip it in my glue, and I'm going to place it. You can place it on top, you can place it underneath, you can place it on the side, all right, on top, underneath, on the side, okay? Now you just have to do that 200 more times. So when your client comes back for their two-week fill, you're not going to remove all the lashes, okay? You're just going to remove the ones that need to be removed that maybe have grown out too far or look a little wonky. And what you're going to do is you're going to do with the banana peel or the twist pull method. So this, she has a pink eyelash on there, okay? You can see her natural lash is right here. The pink lash is right there. What you're going to do is you're going to grab the natural lash with your tweezers and the extensions with the other, and you're just gonna gently pull, gently pull apart like a banana peel. And then that extension comes off, and her natural lash is nice and healthy and safe underneath. All right.